Hi, and welcome to the show. Subscribe at kevinmd.com slash podcast and get CME for this episode by clicking on the CME link in the show notes. Today, we welcome Teresa Mann. She's an obstetrician gynecologist, and today's Kevin MD article is titled Essential Postpartum Care, Lessons from 30 Years in Obstetrics and Gynecology. Teresa, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Kevin. I am so excited to be here, and I appreciate the opportunity to share my story with your audience. So let's start right there. Tell us your story and journey to where you are today. Uh, well, as you mentioned, I'm a board certified OBGYN. I'm in the field for almost 30 years. I actually did not come from a family of doctors. I, in college, thought I wanted to do something in the helping professions and really was not focused on medicine at all. And I guess like most young people, wasn't really laser focused on one area. So when I came out of college, I worked for several years in social service uh, arena. And you know, I realized that wasn't really going to be for me. And I was had a wonderful opportunity to work as a research assistant in the Veterans Administration in a VA hospital working on a project in depression and veterans. And it was a amazing experience seeing the vets, many of them getting better with pharmacotherapy. And I honestly, I think it was that experience that really led me to think about med school. And so by the time I went to med school, I had worked several years. I was not a traditional student at all. And I really, really enjoyed a lot of my clinical rotations in medical school, but OBGYN grabbed my heart because mm. it was the chance to practice medicine and surgery. But the truth is it was really mostly very joyful. So that's kind of the short version of how I got here. So you've been practicing obstetrics and gynecology for, for 30 plus years now, just in general, tell me how that field has evolved to what it is today. Well, you know what it is, it has evolved a lot, particularly around postpartum, which is, you know, what I wrote my article on. And there were three things that really kind of came factor together for me to, to writing the article. And one of the things in the field, and I think any obstetrician would say it is we're constantly learning from our patients. Mm -hmm. And when I was thinking about the article that I wrote, you know, I had an aha moment. I was a few years out of residency. I was working in private practice and I got a call from a woman I had delivered recently. And when I picked up the phone, I was not prepared for what I heard from her. I mean, she was panicked. She was screaming and basically telling me, you know, babies were so expensive and she didn't know how she was going to do all this. And, you know, I was listening intently. And the more I listened and asked questions, it became abundantly clear that she was completely overwhelmed with the duties of motherhood and healing postpartum and worrying about getting back to work and, and her responsibilities at home. And you know what? I never forgot her. And I think that so many physicians would say there are patients you never forget. And she was, she was one for me. And that call really jolted me and crystallized for me and helped me connect the dots with dozens of my own patients that this time after birth is immensely demanding mentally, emotionally, and physically. And as joyful as it is, it's, it is also equally as stressful and, and overwhelming. And I think as people practice, especially in our field, you know, you start to gain a better appreciation for that. And, you know, some women, when do they have their baby in the hospital? You know, they have beautiful 24 hour mm -hmm. care meals are brought in. There's help with the baby and then they go home and there's nothing. I, I just had a mom. One of my moms the other day was in that situation mm. and there's not too much we can do up until this current time about that. And, and then there are others who maybe have a family member or friend who can help or who are lucky enough to hire help. And they have that for days or weeks and then that stops and they're all on their own. So that appreciation, I think has really helped develop some of the things now we have to offer mothers. So that was something that factored into me thinking about the article. The other thing was basically social media, which honestly, Kevin, I had avoided for years, but mostly mm -hmm. because I, I didn't have a lot of time. 
but I, I had invented something for mothers for postpartum healing that kind of caused me to have to get onto social media. And I started reading about what mothers were posting in mom's groups about their postpartum experience and how unprepared they were and how they wished the medical community had helped them more. And, and then the third thing was, you know, those of us who are working with residents, I know what my experience was almost 30 years ago and what I see today. And, and I realized we have have to be teaching more about the fourth trimester. So that, unfortunately, that piece didn't change a lot, in my opinion, um, not only about the physical aspects of postpartum, but about perinatal mood disorders and postpartum depression so that these young residents can appreciate it when they see it, that they know what they're dealing with and that they can offer women the help they need. So I think those are some areas where the specialty has changed somewhere it's not, but those are the things that factored into where, why I wrote the article. So you talk more about each of those points in your Kevin MD article, essential postpartum care lessons from 30 years in obstetric gynecology. So one of the things that you did mention was that proverbial fourth trimester, and you touched upon this earlier, but go into a little bit more detail. What are some of the major issues women face in the postpartum period? Well, number one, postpartum healing. You know, women who've had a baby know, but women who have not had a baby don't know and are not prepared that postpartum physically their body is extremely different and they are sometimes not equipped to deal with all the pain and swelling and discomfort they have, which is pretty typical after vaginal birth. It's not uncommon to have lacerations that are repaired that are very uncomfortable. Women sometimes experience urinary incontinence postpartum. You know, a young woman, I just saw a woman the other day, 22 years old, had a baby. And, you know, as I was leaving, in the room, she asked me if she could tell me about something. And she was so timid about it. And I said, Yeah, sure. What's tell me what's happening. And she told me I, I can't get to the bathroom. I, I'm just urine is just coming out. You know, and it was I, and you know what I was thankful I was with a resident and it was a real teaching moment. And I was able to talk to her and say, you know what, sometimes this happens after you have a baby. In a few weeks, the good news is it usually resolves. But guess what, if it doesn't, we have help. We have pelvic floor physical therapy. We can have you see and get you help for that. So there's that aspect of it. There is the physical toll it takes on mothers, sleep deprivation. It's ruinous. Listen, we as physicians know that, right? Mm -hmm. These are mothers caring for young babies, the learning about their babies, learning the cues from their babies. They're dealing with that. They're juggling with perhaps other children household chores, work demands. Most women are working mothers working outside the home. So this is a lot that women are coping with postpartum. You mentioned earlier that a lot of the things that you see on social media was that patients wish that the medical establishment can do more to ease that transition into that postpartum period, more support, more education. What would you like to see? Well, I'll tell you, yes, reading on social media, these firsthand accounts from real moms with real struggles who are really vocal and super disappointed about the lack of support that they got was shocking. I would love to see all women being offered postpartum physical therapy, pelvic floor physical therapy letting mothers know that there is mental health help available if they need it. Lactation support has always been around in some form or another, more so now, but actually, you know what, bringing mothers back sooner, bringing them back. Typically we'd see them in six weeks for a postpartum visit, which I think is probably still the norm. The American College of OBGYN in 2018 had a committee opinion about postpartum care and they really recognizing this recommended that women be brought back sooner, maybe even mm -hmm. three weeks to have postpartum care. Because the thing I really, really impressed upon me, not only with this young lady I just mentioned with the incontinence, but also I read all over social media is that women were afraid or ashamed to talk about these things that were ha happening to them postpartum. And I think if we can sort of address that early on, even during prenatal care, 
to prepare them, not to frighten them, but to prepare them, but to also let them know, you know what, there's help available. We're here to help you, I think would be an amazing thing. Now, what is the current standard of care in terms of what is typically offered most women postpartum? You mentioned a menu of resources. Are these resources available to most women? You know what? I don't know in all areas of the country that they are. I'm very grateful that where I am, it is available. I don't know that they're widely available everywhere. And when you go on these social media boards and you're hearing these firsthand accounts from postpartum women, one of the things that we worry about in social media are things like misinformation, because a lot of times when the medical establishment isn't there, there are other practitioners that fill that space. And sometimes that the information they give isn't always the most medically accurate. What are you seeing in that respect? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know what? It, it wasn't just disappointment from these mothers that I was reading in these posts, but you know what? It was outright anger sometimes and even a mistrust of the medical community. And, and it was that, what it seemed to me from what I read was that those are the things that sort of led them to these social media personalities for who are there ready to give advice. And, and, and I was reading that women were turning to them for help with postpartum and, you know, being sold all kinds of services and products. And, and, and they were people who seemingly had no, medical background. And it was, it was really shocking. Quite honestly, it was very tough to read. What kind of services did you see being sold to these women? Things like postpartum, I won't say counseling, but sort of support, I'll say support groups or support therapy, talking therapy, that kind of thing. Sometimes herbal treatments and that kind of thing were being offered to women. So what are some of the things that women can do? Because like you said, the medical establishment isn't doing enough to ease that transition into the postpartum period. So for women looking for more support and they're going to social media, what kind of advice can you offer them? I would ask them to talk to their healthcare provider and, and I would ask healthcare providers to start talking to their patients. You know, it's interesting when women come in labor uh, and uh, any OBs listening can relate to this story. Some women come with beautifully written out birth plans, sometimes 10 pages long of the things that they want in labor. In 27 years, I have never seen one mother come with a postpartum plan. And so that's an area where I think we can really start working to help women. It's so simple to do. It's you know, when you're seeing, especially at the end of pregnancy, you're seeing them every week and sometimes more than that, if other things are going on, it's so simple to take five minutes, you know, to just start bringing up some of these topics and talking to them about it and raising their awareness about it. So tell us the success story. You clearly spent a lot of time and effort on this postpartum period, bringing awareness and letting mothers know about some of the resources available. Tell us a success story where you really helped the mother transition as comfortably as possible into that postpartum period and really helped her out. Well, you know, I think the mother I mentioned in my article, she, she will forever be in my mind and my heart. And I was very happy to be able to be supportive of her. So that was, that was a success story. And actually I, I have had women come back before the classic six week postpartum period to tell me that they were really feeling depressed, that they were having trouble coping. And, you know, it's funny early on in my career, it wasn't so easy to find mental health services to help them, but I have had that ability to do that now. And so I am just so pleased about that. And I'm so grateful, you know, the, the department I'm working in now, they actually have on staff psychiatrists to see these women if they want it and pelvic floor physical therapy. So I am just really lucky that I'm working in a space where I, I have that ability to refer women for these services right away and get them help right away. 
So let's talk a little bit more about that behavioral health component of postpartum care. We hear a lot about postpartum depression and how devastating that can be. Where are we today when it comes to addressing postpartum depression and how can we improve? Yeah, you know, interestingly, in 20, June of 2023, this year, the uh, Obstetrics and Gynecology Journal, our green journal, they devoted a significant piece of that journal to perinatal mood disorders. And they, they gave a statistic that I was just shocked by. One in five women are suffering from perinatal mood disorders. And that mm-hmm. includes during pregnancy and up to a year after. And it's not only postpartum depression, bipolar disorder, anxiety disorders. And I don't know if it's just me, I think not, but I see a lot of patients that report anxiety and not just that they're feeling anxious, but that they're being treated for anxiety. That is a major predictor of perinatal depression. So it means that there are people in all of our practices, not only obstetrics, but probably in internal medicine and other practices that are seeing pregnant women who are having this issue. And so it is really huge. And it was so fantastic that they devoted a portion of the journal, this recent journal to this topic, because it raises awareness. And unfortunately, it it seems to take a tragedy in the news when something happens to a mother or her newborn or both And then the news cycle passes and postpartum depression goes out of the public consciousness until the next tragedy happens. So I was really happy to see that this article was devoted to this and it just also raises the awareness. And that's the thing. You have to be thinking about it and be aware of it. And and that's the number one thing. And then of course, getting the mental health support that someone needs. We're talking to Teresa Mann. She's an obstetrician gynecologist in today's Kevin MD article titled Essential Postpartum Care, Lessons from 30 Years in Obstetrics Gynecology. Teresa, tell us some of your take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience. Well, I would say, I would say this. I think that in almost 30 years in this field, pregnant women are a feared entity across medical specialties and they're treated with kid gloves as they should be. Postpartum mothers aren't given a second thought. So be aware because emergency room physicians, family medicine doctors, internal medicine doctors, surely pediatricians are going to see these women probably before their obstetrician sees them for a postpartum visit. And they may be challenging So appreciate that they have been through a physically grueling experience. They're probably immensely sleep deprived and maybe anxious over all the things that they're juggling, but whatever reason you're encountering them, listen to them because you may be the one that identifies the mother with postpartum depression or some other issue. And the first person she sees who can guide her to the help she needs. And you you can be the person to make an immense difference in that mother's life. And I think that's the lesson. Teresa, thank you so much for sharing your perspective and insight. And thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Kevin.